And we'll start with a, with a brief recap uh, followed by a uh, discussion of quantizations. of algebra that I denoted last time as C of M. I will recall what this means. And then we'll talk about finite dimensional representations. OK? So let me remind you that uh, the general setting last time was the following. I have a, a reductive G acting on R which is a vector space. <coughs> uh, this gave me an action of G on T star of R and a moment map mu from T star of R uh, to G dual. How was this map defined? Uh, if you want to compute m of r and alpha paired with x from g. Uh, this is alpha paired with xr. Or equivalently, you can define the dual map, so-called co-moment map, mu star from g to polynomial functions on t star of r. And there's a composition of two maps, a map from G to vector fields on R. This map comes from the action of the group, and I will denote it by x goes to x sub R. And then you can view vector fields on R as polynomial functions on T star of R. So these are functions of degree 1. Uh, with respect to our dual. Okay? Now, uh, if I have a quiver Q, uh, also the dimension and the framing vector V and W, I can assign to it the group G depending on V, which acts on the space R depending on Q, V, and W. And I can start producing Hamiltonian reductions for this data. So first of all, I have um, uh, M0, which was the uh, usual quotient of the zeros of the moment map of G. Or I can write uh, the algebra of functions on the scheme, that's an affine scheme, <coughs> and it has a Poisson bracket. So the algebra of functions on M0 uh, is the following. So the algebra of functions on mu minus 1 of 0 is the quotient of all polynomials by the ideal generated by these elements here, right? XR. And then I need to take G invariance. Okay? So this is one object I'm going to care about. Uh, the next object uh, is uh, the JT uh, reduction. So I take generic theta, a character. So it can be viewed as an element of Z to Q0. Uh, and then I have M theta, which is JT quotient. So this fellow here is smooth and symplectic. And then I can form the third guy, M, which is a spectrum 
of regular functions on M theta. Okay? And I have Poisson morphism from M to M0. So this is Poisson. So this is what was discussed last time. Now I want to make an additional comment about the torus sections. So all objects that I consider, I have an action of a one-dimensional torus. So C times X on T star of R are scaling just everything. At the usual dilation action on T star of R. And then uh, mu minus 1 uh, is uh, stable. And so I have compatible actions of C times on all these uh, varieties here. So C times acts on M0, it acts on M, it acts on M theta. And this action is compatible with uh, symplectic and Poisson structures. For example, the Poisson bracket on uh, the algebra of functions on M0 and the algebra of functions on M uh, has degree minus 2. Meaning that if I take a function of degree 3 and function of degree 5, the bracket has degree 6. Okay? All right. So this was basically a recap from last time. And now let's proceed to talking about uh, quantizations. And I'm going to quantize the algebra of functions on M, which is the same as algebra of functions on M theta. That's a graded Poisson algebra. Uh, to start, uh, let me uh, recall the general formalism of quantizations. So I'm going to care about so-called fielded quantizations. So let me remind you what that means. <coughs> so definition. I start with a Poisson algebra. A, uh, which is also commutative and associative, of course, uh, which is graded and uh, I assume that the degree of the bracket is some negative number, negative d, where d is a positive integer. Well, think about uh, this example here. Now, by definition, a field of quantization <coughs> of A is, strictly speaking, a pair of a curly A and a iota, where the meaning of these symbols is the following. So curly A is a field of associative algebra. So it's a union of its filtered pieces. Uh, such that when I take the bracket of A less or equal than I and A less or equal than J, I land in A less or equal I plus J minus D. Okay? Because of this, the associated graded uh, is Poisson, and the degree of the bracket is also minus d. 
okay? Now, a iota is an isomorphism of this associated graded with my initial algebra straight A. And this isomorphism is required to be graded in Poisson. So this is graded and Poisson. Let me give you, oops, let me give you a kindergarten example of quantization. So let's take straight A to be polynomial functions on T star of R. So this is symplectic, so it carries a Poisson structure explicitly. Uh, it's the following. Two vectors from R, Poisson commute, and two co-vectors from R dual, Poisson commute. And if you want to uh, commute a vector and a co-vector, you will get their pairing. Okay? So how do we quantize this? Uh, in fact, the only field of quantization is the algebra of differential operators on R. Which by definition is the quotient of the tensor algebra of R plus R dual. By, well, the analogs of this commutation relations. So the bracket of R1 and R2 is equal to the bracket of alpha 1, alpha 2, equal to 0. And the bracket of R and alpha is the pairing of alpha and R. Okay? And the grading here is just uh, usual grading on polynomials. The filtration here is the Bernstein filtration where R and R dual have degree 1. Okay? So D in this case is equal to 2. Okay. So um, that's a general formalism of filtered quantizations. Now let's proceed to our task. So our task is to produce quantizations of uh, polynomial functions on M. So goal for this part is to construct uh, quantizations of C of M. Okay. So how are we going to do this? For this, we'll produce quantum version of the polynomial functions on M0. And what, what, what that is, let me remind you, so I take t star of r, take polynomial functions. Your information is outdated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't see this button. Here's a TV for you. <laughs> Okay. And the tool, yeah. It's an exercise, Sasha. Exercises will keep you healthy and clever. <laughs> clever. Um, right. And the tool that I'm going to use is called quantum Hamiltonian reduction. I 
basically, I need to take this formula and replace everything by uh, quantum analogs. And this uh, reduction comes with an additional parameter, which I will call lambda. And uh, lambda is going to be an element in CQ0. Or in other words, lambda is a character of the Lie algebra G. How does this correspondence work? Well, uh, so to lambda we assign the function which sends x, which is a collection of xi, where i is in q0, to the sum over i, lambda i, times the trace of xi. So what am I going to do? I'm going to define the algebra that I will call a lambda with superscript 0 to be the following. So I replace this algebra by differential operators, d of r. And I mod out by the left ideal generated by elements of the form x sub r minus lambda of x where x is in g. <clears throat> okay? x sub r is a vector field. In particular, it's a differential operator. And then I take uh, g invariants. And let me, uh, for simplicity, denote this left ideal by i sub lambda. This is only a left ideal, so what I have an, uh, in, inside of the brackets is not an algebra. However, when I take g invariance, it becomes an algebra. So the product is given like this, a plus i lambda times b plus i lambda equal to, surprise, surprise, a b plus i lambda. And this is well-defined associative product, which I leave as an exercise. We can write it as endomorphisms of this module, opposite. All right. So now let's try to understand the relation of this algebra to objects that appeared before. Maybe let's notice that um, uh, x sub r lies in the associated gradient of phi lambda. And this leaves inside of polynomial functions on t star of r. So the whole ideal generated by those fellows lies here. Because of this, I have a epimorphism from algebra of functions on M0, which is written over there, to the associated graded of a lambda, well, the grading comes from uh, the, gra the, the filtration on A lambda comes from the filtration on the differential operators. It's, sorry, it's, it's an epimorphism. So I have an epimorphism of graded Poisson algebras. <coughs> okay. So that's what I get for free. And my question is, when is this fellow a filtered quantization of C of M? Okay? C of M is related to this, but somewhat different in general. Uh, let me tell you two results in this direction. Facts. 
First of all, if the moment map is flat, well, it's sometimes, sometimes it is, well, if it's flat, then uh, this map over there is an isomorphism. Maybe that's not an exercise, but that's a homework problem. One needs to think a little bit. Now, uh, remember, under the same flatness assumption, C of M0 is the same as C of M. So we do get a quantization as we want it. So a lambda is a quantization of C of M. Okay? So in this case, everything is good. Uh, fact means that there will be two. So the second claim is that in general, I still get a field of quantization when the parameter lambda is the risky generic. So let me write it down. So the second fact is that in general A0 lambda is a quantization of C of M if lambda is the risky generic. A warning. So this C of M, in general, is not the same as this guy. OK? I thought the C of M was finite over this. So I thought the natural map from C of M0 to C of M was injective. No. No. Is it injective? No, not necessarily. So you are saying that there is some very subtle relationship between? Yes. Well, I mean, I wouldn't call it very subtle. Uh, there is some relationship. So, so that map is subjective. That the, the map from C of M zero to something that's supposed to be called C of M is subjective. The other map is. So uh, maybe I need to be a bit careful about um, uh, the suitable filtration. I may need to modify filtration for this claim. Maybe with different filtration. I will sort of explain what's going on uh, in a bit. Okay. All right. So now let's try to see some examples of uh, these algebras. Okay. Of wh what kind of algebras do we get? And for this, we will uh, still consider the same uh, examples as last time. So our first example was uh, quiver with one vertex and no loops. So in this case, m theta was t star of Grassmannian <coughs> of Ew. And what I can do, I can consider a quantum version of this. If I have a lambda, which is a complex number, I can consider twisted differential operators. Uh, d lambda on this Grassmannian. Okay? That's a shift on the Grassmannian. When lambda is zero, it's the usual differential operators. When lambda is integral, it's differential operators with coefficients in a line bundle. In general, it's some continuation of uh, this construction. Okay? And uh, I can produce a lambda, which is a global section, of this shape. So 
So let me number my facts by 1 and 2. So it turns out that under one of these assumptions, uh, this is the algebra that I get. If uh, one, which is equivalent to saying, let me remind you, that 2v is less or equal than w, or 2 hold, Uh, then a0 lambda is the same as a lambda. Uh, when lambda is a risky generic. So for the risky generic lambda, this two algebras coincide, and in general, I don't know. And uh, if you remember this example, was generalized uh, if I have a quiver like this, type A drinking quiver with one dimension with, uh, with the framing uh, in the first vertex, then uh, M theta is T star of flag variety and I can still define a lambda as a global uh, twisted differential operators, and the same as the morphism holds. Have same conclusion. To summarize this part, well, I mean the algebras of twisted differential operators on partial flock varieties do arise in this Hamiltonian reduction construction. Now let me proceed to my second example, and my second example was a Jordan quiver. And here I assume that v is equal to some integer n, and w is equal to 1. So what algebra do I quantize? I quantize the algebra of ascending variant functions on C2n, I can write it like this. So I send just permutes these pairs, and the moment map is flat in this case, okay? So my A0 is going to quantize literally this algebra always, for all lambda. Now I can actually describe this A0 lambda, and for this I need to remind you rational Chirinik algebras. And this H lambda is going to quantize a related algebra. So it's a quantization of, let me write it on the left board, it's a quantization of the semi-direct tensor product. You know, where, where this elements here and this elements here commute as you expect them to. And I can define H lambda by generators and relations quite easily. So I take the free algebra in the two n variables. I haven't made the joke yet. You need to wait, okay? <laughs> So I take a similar semi-direct product, but now with the free algebra. 
And I mod out the relations which say the following. So xi's commute with each other, and yi's commute with each other. <coughs> then yi and xj give me lambda times the transposition of i and j. And finally, yi bracket with xi is 1 minus lambda, the sum over j different from i, i transposition with j. So that's a rational Chirinic algebra of Wittinghoff and Ginsburg. Um, now how do I get from, uh, from here to a quantization of invariance? Well, I take the averaging and important. E, which sits in the group algebra of SN, which in its turn sits inside of H lambda, that's an item potent. And I can produce the so called spherical subalgebra E H lambda E, which now quantizes. the invariance. Which is a similar spherical subalgebra inside of this semi-direct product. And uh, it turns out, it was proved by Gang and Ginsburg, that A0 lambda is isomorphic to E H lambda E. So this is some algebra that people uh, have started before. So far, so good. So now let me mention, to finish with this, let me mention that this can be generalized. Yes. You know about Belarusian fireman? Fireman? Fireman. Fireman, no. You really? You can explain it later. Okay, I'll explain it later. I'm going to make a remark about this in, 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 in three minutes, okay? I was always wondering how you translate the joke to English. With difficulty. So, generalization uh, if Q is affine ADE, Uh, v is equal to n delta, and w is epsilon zero, like, like last time. So in this case, the algebra A is similar invariance, but for a bigger group, as n semi-direct is gamma to n. Then this algebra A zero lambda is so-called spherical uh, symplectic reflection algebra. Okay, now let me make a remark uh, requested by Denise. Is that I, I'm not telling you full, full, full truth, let me tell you the entire truth. Um, a remark is that uh, we can talk about fielded quantizations of the smooth Q variety itself of M theta. And these are going to be, uh, roughly speaking, shifts uh, A theta of fielded algebras on M theta whose associated graded is the structure shift. Now if I take uh, the same lambda as before, a uh, quantum Hamiltonian reduction for shifts uh, 
uh, will give me a quantization depending on this lambda, which will be a shift. Okay. Now I can pass to global sections, a lambda. And I get a quantization of C of M. It's a shift in conical topology. Yes, uh, it's a microlocal shift in conical topology or whatever. Uh, basically, we have seen something like this in example number one. So in example one, where we had to start of Grassmannian, and this construction will produce the microlocalization of the shift of uh, twisted differential operators. Uh, and what's relation between this fellow and uh, a zero lambda? Well, it's the same as relation between m zero and m. <coughs> it, 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 it doesn't need to be an isomorphism, but there is a map, and it's an isomorphism under the conditions that I've stated before. Generic, Generic lambda or flat moment map. So uh, I have a map from A0 lambda to A lambda, homomorphism of algebras, which is iso for iso when mu is flat, or lambda is generic. No, mu, 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 uh, mu, at moment map. At, the at zero. Flat over, over everything. No. No, no, it's flat, they associate with regular stuff. And so, actually, these are guys I'm interested in, but uh, this uh, algebra is easier to construct. So I'm going to confuse the two on purpose, OK? Uh, and finally, uh, the final remark is that A lambdas actually exhaust uh, filtered quantizations of C of M. OK. Uh, I must confess, I don't know any examples where this A0 lambda is not a quantization, but I haven't thought about this okay. very hard. All right. So now, OK, so what I want to do basically in the remainder of my lectures today and tomorrow is to try to study the representation theory of these algebras. And the question that I'm going to ask is the most basic one, say how many finite dimensional reducibles I have. So that's the last part of today's talk is finite dimensional wraps of A lambdas. Or you can think about A0 lambdas. In any case, I'm only going to treat the risky generic lambdas here. OK, so uh, what am I going to do? I want to consider K0 of the category of finite dimensional modules. So this category depends on lambda, of course, and also on the dimension and the frame. So these are, this are finite dimensional modules. And uh, for simplicity, uh, this K0 is going to be over C, OK, with complex coefficients. So what I'm going to do, I want to compare it to a certain subspace that I will define in uh, the guys that appeared before. It was denoted L omega with new in square brackets. So let me remind you what this notation means. So 
So, okay, so omega was a dominant weight, sum over all i, <coughs> wi times pi i. So it's a dominant weight with labels wi's. Then L omega is a corresponding rep of the Katsmudi algebra, the usual Katsmudi algebra G of Q. And inside, I have the weight space. Uh, of weight nu and nu is omega minus the sum of vi alpha i. Well, alpha i is a simple rule. And what is this geometrically? Well, that's the middle homology of m theta v double. By results of Nakaji. So uh, now I need to define a certain subspace inside of the space. And for this, I will need another ingredient which now knows about uh, the parameter lambda. I need to consider, let me call it integral subalgebra <coughs> A inside of g of q. It's going to be integral subalgebra for lambda. Uh, by definition, this fellow is generated by the Cartan H and real, that's very important, real root spaces GQ beta. So beta is a root. And uh, the conditions that I want to put on this root is that beta scalar product with lambda is an integer. Okay, so it's like a regular Katsmudi subalgebra inside of G of Q. Okay, uh, let me make a couple of remarks. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with real roots, uh, when my uh, G, when my Q is dinking, I, there is no restriction, all roots are real. When my Q is a fine Dinkin, uh, I need to exclude imaginary roots which are n deltas. Okay. And then, of course, uh, for this algebra A, there are two extremes. Uh, if lambda is an integer, then I can just take all the simple roots and they will satisfy this condition. So in this case, of course, A is the whole algebra G of Q. And if lambda, on the other hand, is generic, meaning very irrational, then no roots satisfy this condition. And A is just the Cartan. And the general case is somewhere in between. Okay? Now, uh, once I define the subalgebra, I can define my subspace, the subspace that I care about. And the subspace is going, well, first of all, let me define the subspace in the whole L omega. I will denote it L omega, the superscript A. So is the U of A submodule. of L omega, which is generated by extremal weights, extremal vectors for GQ. 
let me write a formula for this. So what I do Uh, so L omega A is going to be the sum over all wild group elements. I can consider the wild group of my Kasmudi algebra. I denote a W of Q. And then I apply U of A to the weight space corresponding to sigma omega. The sigma omegas are precisely extremal weights. I take all these vectors and I generate a submodule for A. Okay? Uh, and I hope you guys have a room for one more notation. It's going to be easy. So L omega A bracket nu is going to be just the weight space of weight nu in my subspace. This makes sense because H sits inside of A by definition. All right, now I can state a conjecture. It's still a conjecture. Uh, uh, and, and this is due to Roman Bezrukovnikov and myself back in 2013. So this conjecture says the following. If a uh, homological dimension of A lambda is finite, then uh, K0 that I care about, K0 finite dimensional representations, uh, is this space. Yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm lazy and I consider K0 over complex numbers. Although you can say what is the real form is and so on. You, you, you can say a lot here, just let me for simplicity not do that. Theorem? No, no, no. In, in this generality, it's conjecture. I will stay, okay. So uh, I will state a theorem that I think I will make an important historical remark. Okay? Uh, Denise, I will, I will tell you. But, uh, so far, I'm not supposed to see this, but, but wait a minute. It's not even an exercise. Hmm? It's not even an exercise. It's not even an exercise. And not even a homework problem. So a theorem that was uh, proved by first uh, Roma and myself, and then in more general situation by myself, Uh, says that when Q is of. I L cancels. <laughs> Come and try. Um, if Q is of a uh, dinking or fine dinking type. Uh, then conjecture is true. <coughs> How is it related to this, uh, to this kind of unbranded conjecture that Roman says? I will explain it in my talk. So is that, is that not implied? So is this one? No, no it doesn't. So Let's discuss this later in Roma's talk. Okay. So uh, let me make a historical remark. So um, this is formally a conjecture of ours. But it's just uh, basically copy pasted from a conjecture of Wittgenhoff in a special case, in the case of uh, symplectic reflection algebras. And now let me praise Pasha a little bit. So, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not ill minded, okay? I didn't want, I just uh, pointed out. No, 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 no. You, you want it, I know. Uh, so, um, 
as I will explain in the remaining, uh, I don't know, seven, eight, whatever, 10 minutes, uh, this conjecture is pretty natural if you, you know, if you think about uh, Nakajima theory of Kasmudi algebra action on the equivalent. But Pasha somehow managed to state the conjecture without thinking about that. And I think that's a very good indication that he's a genius. And um, I should even say stable genius. <laughs> this joke actually was pre-ordered, OK? I had to do it. No, no I asked you to say that Roma is a stable genius. No, no, it's a, you, know, you, know, you need to order it yourself. Yeah, Roma didn't order it. You have to explain what stable, stable envelopes are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> should I say that he's unstable genius? <laughs> All right. So uh, in the remaining uh, several minutes, let me <coughs> explain why uh, we should believe in this. Okay. So why is it a natural statement? So ingredients of the proof. Uh, so first of all. What you can do, if you remember the notation from last time, under the condition that uh, homological dimension is finite, uh, my k0 is identified with an analogous k0 for the corresponding sheaf. Uh, k0 of coherent modules over a lambda theta the omega, and I need a I need a condition which is a counterpart of finite dimension. Well, this condition is being supported on the zero five of the resolution map. So here rho is the resolution from m theta to m. And in cases I care about, uh, this is Lagrangian of variety. Okay, so this isomorphism holds if homological dimension is finite. Okay? Is that the only place where you use homological dimension finite? Yes, but that's a crucial one. No, I understand, but tomorrow, but I mean, so the question is, I mean, if you start with the right-hand side, can you put the same thing with the two of them? So when your, when your lambda becomes singular, what you need to do, you need to take a quotient of this. Oh, no, 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 this is, this is translation invariant. So okay. this thing is always uh, going to be isomorphic to, to this. <coughs> now, okay, so how do I get from this thing here to L omega nu? Uh, there is a characteristic cycle map. to middle homology, and this is precisely L omega nu. And by result of uh, Baranovsky and Ginsburg, which hasn't been published yet, uh, this map is injective. So characteristic cycle embeds this k0 here to the middle homology. Okay, so at least I can embed my k0 into this uh, weight space, and now I ask what the image is. A relatively easy thing to prove is that uh, this weight subspace in L omega A actually lies inside of my k0. Okay? And this is known for all types. It doesn't require finite or fine. So 
So let me uh, briefly explain how this is proved. So basically what you need to use, you need to use uh, an appropriate categorical analog of Nakajima's construction. So Nakajima constructs an action of uh, Lie algebra on cohomology, and we want to construct an action of a Lie algebra on the category. Uh, and the Lie algebra should be this uh, guy A. So uh, this is because A acts on the following. So I take the direct sum over all these of uh, db rho minus 1, 0 of Koch A lambda theta V omega. Okay? So this, uh, this, uh, this is a full subcategory in the derived category of all objects whose Koch homology are supported on the zero fiber. Okay? And this category is derived equivalent to similarly defined category for representations of a -land. So more precisely, uh, for suitable simple root system, uh, let's say alpha 1 through alpha k of a, we can define end of factors E alpha i and F alpha i acting on this uh, category. Uh, I should write db rho minus 1 of 0, such that the characteristic cycle map intertwines <coughs> uh, the classes of these functors in K0 with the corresponding operators acting on the middle homology with E alpha i and F alpha i acting on the sum of middle homologies. And this construction is basically in two steps. When uh, these guys are simple roots for the original algebra, this was these functors were constructed by Webster, and then with Roma we managed to extend uh, the construction to the general case. Okay, so I have these functors. How does this help me to prove the inclusions that I want? Well, it's the following. Uh, I have very easy example of a finite dimensional representation. This example corresponds to extremal weights. Namely, if I take an extremal weight, then the corresponding Q variety is nothing but a point. And the corresponding quantization is nothing but the algebra of complex numbers. It's a quantization of the algebra on the functions on the point. This guy is known to have a unique irreducible representation, which is finite dimension. Computing dimension is an exercise. Uh, so uh, K0. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> Fin is the same as uh, H middle of M theta. No, I have one minute. And we started later. I know my rights. Come on. Um, and this is C, right? And now when you have these functors, you can produce complexes with finite dimensional cohomology whose uh, classes in K0 precisely span 
this. That's how you get this inclusion. And it works for, for all time, for all types. Uh, and finally, uh, the difficult step, which is not done in all types, is to show that there is nothing more that uh, this weight space is actually equal to k0 of finite dimensional modules. Uh, we use uh, wall crossing functors. And this will be the subject of the third lecture. In the third lecture, I will define those functors and uh, try to explain what properties uh, we are going to use. All right. Now that's it.